Ross Thompson, pleased to be followed by Richard Lockhead. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Since the historic referendum result on the 23rd of June last year, the immediate go-to argument from the Scottish Government has been that Scotland voted to remain, conveniently sidestepping the fact that the EU referendum was a UK-wide vote, something that the Scottish Government acknowledged in their own White Paper for Independence, where on page 210 it states, if we remain part of the UK, a referendum on future British membership of the EU could see Scotland taken out of the EU against the wishes of the people of Scotland. Despite this, Scots still voted over overwhelmingly to remain in the UK. Subsequently, the United Kingdom voted 52% to 48% to leave the EU. But true to her nationalist politics, the First Minister hailed the votes of 1.6 million Scots who voted to remain as representing Scotland's voice. Meanwhile, the votes of one million Scots who voted to leave were airbrushed out of the picture altogether. The First Minister did not even stop to consider that among the Leave voters who are now being deleted from Scotland's national story, there were thousands of her own supporters. So will the nationalist bashful Brexiteer MSPs, along with uh, Labour colleagues, finally use this moment to vote with their heart and their conscience in support of triggering Article 50, or will they remain cowards in hiding? Mr Russell says that this debate is about democracy. Imagine this for just one second. Over one million Scottish voices silenced. In both this Parliament and at Westminster, Scottish Leave voters have been left totally unrepresented. Did you know that in the northeast of Scotland, more people voted Leave than actually voted for the SNP in all 10 constituencies? The government benches try in vain to convince us that their proposals are a compromise. In reality, they are an unworkable fudge in down. which Scotland retains down. free movement in which Scotland retains free movement and single market membership while the rest of the UK leaves. The SNP's so-called compromise would slam down a hard economic wall between Scotland and the rest of the UK, a market worth four times more to Scotland than the EU. In fact, no, I won't. I've only got five minutes, as we know it's not long enough. Uh, we will, uh, in fact, the SNP can really only muster 50 plus pages in a document to say, and this is what they say, Give us everything we want and we will take the threat of independence off the table. Mibbies for a while. The SNP can dress this up as a compromise. I call it constitutional blackmail. Deputy Presiding Officer, Brexit presents a world of opportunity for Scotland. We can negotiate free trade deals with developed and emerging economies. We can control immigration, ensuring that skills and innovation are welcomed with open arms. We can regain control of 200 miles of territorial waters, reinvigorating our fishing industry and coastal communities. And we can finally liberate ourselves from the overreaching and inconsistent jurisdiction of the European Mr. Court Stevenson, of Justice. Mr. Stevenson, you didn't take any, I won't take from you. We have heard the First Minister warn against the rise of populism across the world. However, the government themselves are repeating these very mistakes in continuing to dilute the referendum results of 2014 and 16, in dismissing the voices of no voters and leave voters, the SNP only feed voters disaffection with the democratic process and distrust in politicians. There is palpable frustration amongst nationalist leave supporters for this SNP government's disregard, even contempt for the benefits of Brexit. In their actions, the nationalists stoke divisions the members in rather these last than minutes. seek to heal them. The government are fundamentally incapable of uniting behind anything. They can't even decide whether they support the EU or EFTA or the EAA or some other Norway-style arrangement. We have a computer says no Scottish government which is in total disarray, void of substance, void of direction and void of leadership. In fact, the First Minister is not even in the chamber today for what is supposed to be the most historic of all votes. <laughs> Deputy Presiding Officer, I believe in the talents and the ability of the people of Scotland. I am confident that we uh, can make Brexit down, a children. success. I am confident that we can make Brexit a success 
where Scotland will thrive and flourish out with the EU as we enter a new chapter in our politics. That's why I will proudly vote for the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Amendment this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.